Hi, I'm Ian. And I'm Jason. And this is Ghosts and Bears, the only podcast where we bring you the actual ghost stories with the actual history in the actual place. On this episode, we head out west to Calgary where we go to Heritage Park and hear the ghost stories that lie within. But not just ghost stories. There's cinnamon bread, which I absolutely love. (laughs) And lots more coming up on this episode of Ghosts and Bears. All right, and welcome. Yeah, welcome. Uh, We had the thrill of going out to Calgary this summer, as you may remember. And while we were there, uh, Jason had to work on this particular day. But my mom and I went to Heritage Park, um, which is a place in Calgary. And there's some pictures up for our patrons, if you don't know. And you too can go there. Um, But Heritage Park was somewhere my family would go once a year. And uh, we had like our routine of places we'd go there. And Jay's been, you've been twice now? I yeah, mean, it's I a mean, lot of go. fun. It is a lot of fun. Um, I would have to say our mutual favorite part is the bakery. Um, well, for me, it's the boat ride. But Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, there's a giant train there. And uh, it goes all the way around the park. There's also a boat, which is an old paddle wheel boat. Um and I, SS Moy. SS Moy. And um, I got super excited when we went to Nelson. Do you remember that? Why mm-hmm. I got all excited. Why was that? No, it's because the actual one's there. The actual one is there. And yeah. I, I didn't know that the one at Heritage Park was small. I, I yeah, thought it was, it was full size. Built to scale. <laughs> it's small because it would be stupid if you had a full size paddle wheeler uh, built for going up and down the river um, at Heritage Park on the reservoir. That's a river. Well, no, the one in Calgary isn't. Yeah, no. It's, no. That's not a... Yes. Yeah. So, I guess they're, we're getting confused. Yeah. No, in Calgary, it's more like a puddle. Yeah. They have a lot of fake lakes in Calgary. Um, and also, I had a few weird experiences there as a kid. I remember not... Before I really kind of knew what this stuff was all about, I remember having a few weird um, encounters and weird feelings. And especially one year, my grade four class... Uh, they closed the park in the wintertime mm-hmm. and um, my grade four class got to go and be pioneer kids for a day, which meant um, we had to take our lunch and lunch pails and wear old timey clothes. And if you had to go to the bathroom, you had to go to the hotel um, across the street. Uh, but basically the whole place was shut down. And um, I remember having to walk into that old hotel by myself to go to the bathroom and it just felt really weird which is super weird because um it's just a replica it's not even the real building that's funny yeah so um what else is there oh well you can pretty much go wherever you wish there's several houses which are beautiful i mean they're they're all from the early 1900s um there's also a little well, it's like a fairground sort of thing. Yeah, a little you amusement ride, park do, place. do a little bit of rides, yeah. which was fun. We did the uh, swing, which is kind of like a, I think a, other places call it a yo-yo. So that was that was good. And the bakery, of course, I really enjoyed that. Bakery's amazing. Yeah, it's not bad. I, it's it's delicious, and the restaurant was good. It was it was good. But I'm talking about my previous experience there. Ironically yeah. enough, that at that day had a uh, an eclipse, so. It was interesting because the uh, sun got mostly blocked. So that was interesting. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lots of activity going on. Lots of people and and a lot of stairs to go down to the SS Moy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, and they have ice cream. Oh, yes. That, was a, that was a plus. We were very happy about the ice cream. Yeah, I love ice cream. So um, when Jay and I were there together, this is like two years ago now, I actually did record stories. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I did. And when we got back to uh, Victoria, they, they were gone. They disappeared. I had listened odd. to them. I had transferred them onto the computer. They were gone. I eventually did find a folder that said Heritage Park Stories, and I opened it up, and there was nothing in it. So That's interesting, because this recording system is not running to right tonight. It's odd. It's not. I'm super grumpy about it. It doesn't doesn't seem to want to work. No, it's really weird. So, I don't know what's going on. Um, We are going to talk about um, Heritage Park like it's this ancient history place. (laughs) Um, And to Canadians... (laughs) 
<laughs> it would be because some of these homes were built in the 1890s. Um, I know there's a lot of British people who listen to our show and they're probably like, what? Our garden shed was built in 1890. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this is a huge piece of prairie history. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about the history there. But before we get to all the whitey people history, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um, there's a whole lot more history going on. You mean that, the Caucasians, um, <laughs> the, the colonialists. Um, there's a whole lot of other history that was going on way before they got there. I always think of us. The colonial history is like a drop in a bucket compared to, oh, I don't know, the millions of years the First Nations people were there. I don't think it was millions, but it was a while. It was a while. Longer than the whiteies. Yeah, definitely. So what can you tell us about who was there well, around Calgary? Um, around Calgary is the Blackfoot, um, the Cree, the Chippewan, Sarsi, Stony, and Sutina First Nations. Which is amazing. Yeah, there's so there's, a, there's quite a few. Um, I guess when the railroads were being built, it, it kind of changed the the landscape for these these nations so they kind of got offset and then of course as the railroad completed that was it calgary was settled yeah it'd be interesting to hear or know what if there's a there's a first nations name for calgary so if you feel like letting us know if there's a first nations name for calgary like we say gumpsiwa in our <laughs> first nations and we'll see We'll see how this goes down. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that would be interesting, actually. I love fascinating. that. Fascinating. So, yeah, um, basically, Calgary got um, uh, pulled together because they wanted to put a fort, fork of two rivers, blah, 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 pretty standard prairie story. Um, but Heritage Park, specifically, um, Jason's going to tell us a little bit about Heritage Park. So the initial concept for Heritage Park was formulated in 61, uh, with discussions of Woods Foundation in the city of Calgary, concerning the development uh, of a kind of pioneer theme park. So $150,000 was provided and matched uh, by the foundation, Woods Foundation, and it was matched, of course, by the city of Calgary, uh, which also provided the land, which was very generous of the city of Calgary. Um Calgarians also pledged another $77,000, and with the funding in place, it was laid to become one of North America's largest and most successful history museums. And it, was, it really is. It is fabulous, yeah. yeah. It's really well done. So, um, the Glambo Foundation and some city officials un jointly undertook the early planning stages of the park, and, and then the Park Society was formed in the fall of '63 and placed in charge of construction, development, and operation of the park. And to complete the project, uh, Standard Holdings provided project manager, the foundation, Glenbow Foundation, supplied field representative, and the city of Calgary, um, in corporations, individuals, made personnel, and services available at little or no cost of the society. So that was fabulous. Yeah, really cool how they all came together. And within nine months, a couple dozen historical buildings were moved and repaired and sounds like gentrified. And uh, a few thousand artifacts or knickknacks were placed about. Uh, a vintage train, which I do quite enjoy, is now one of an iconic feature of this park. It was restored to its original condition and almost a mile of track was laid. That's quite a feat, 4,300 feet um for its uh, journey around the park which takes a few minutes it's quite nice it i remember stops at three at, stations yeah th doesn't it stop every other station that's its kind oh, of oh yeah 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 rotation and uh the public was open or the park was open to the public on july 1st 1964 so canada, Yay, canada day. day so that's pretty cool it's coming up 50 years in a couple of years and it's operated by 100 volunteers, uh, six full-time staff, and 22 part-time employees. So thank well, you very much. Not. Now it's not. Well, no. <laughs> now, now it's got a whole different vibe. It's a very different vibe. It's a little more Disney, Disneyland yeah. without uh, large mice. Yeah, it's quite nice. I really enjoy it there. They do do some fun dram dramatic reenactments. 
Mm, so yes, it'll be like, do. you know, big fight at the doctor's house or you know, whatever. <laughs> it's actually kind of cool. Um, That's true. Yeah, it's a really fun place. It's a good place to go for the day. And um, they're pretty laid back. There's um, just a lot of good, uh, good places to go there. Um, they also do have a land acknowledgement, which is nice. It's in Treaty 7 mm-hmm. territory. Mm-hmm. And so they want to make sure that people know they're on that land. The Blackfoot, and, yeah. Sakina, and I apologize. E.R. Hey, Nakoda, M.A.T. people. Yeah, so that's really cool. Um, I went to four different places, very specific places in the park that do have um, ghost stories. And I am going to be telling the ghost stories in the story time. You're also going to get to hear the train because the train was in there as <laughs> it does, well. It does its little whistling well, here and there. it's kind of iconic. Like, it's yeah, kind of awesome. I like it. I do too. It's got a lot of charm. The whole place does. And the way they set it up is like there's a prairie town. There's like a, a, a yes, town town, like a downtown. That's correct. Um, there's a little um, fort community with sod building and that kind of thing. So Yeah, it's like an industrial district. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool. But... Industrial district from Pioneer Times. Oh, and there's the big roundhouse with all the trains. Mm-hmm. Those were super cool. There's a working blacksmith. Mm-hmm. That's That was nice. To yeah, see. yeah. The grain elevator. Yeah. Um, well, it does a... pay homage to the prairie setting. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good faithful representation of the times. Well, and when we talk about these buildings coming in, like if you go in them now, you're going to be like, oh, it's so cool. They've got these super old buildings. Mm-hmm. But th- a lot of them came in pretty messed up. Um, some of them had been being used as grain silos. Like they would just put boards over the windows and fill them with with grain from the chimney on down. Hmm. Um, so when they brought them in, they had a lot of work to do cleaning them up. The Prince House, which is one of the first ones we talk about um, for ghosts, mm-hmm. it turned into a rooming house for quite some time. So, yeah, kind of a wacky collection of buildings. There's one, I think I do talk about this in story time, but forgive me, it's been a couple months now. Um, there's one building down in sort of the prairie town where the farmhouse is. Mm-hmm. And I believe it was used for many, many years in downtown Calgary as uh, like a garage, a repair shop kind of thing. There's something really bad in that building. Oh, I, yeah, I felt it when I was there. Yeah, and even when as a kid, by, you could feel it. Yeah. yeah, even as a kid, I felt it. So, um, yeah, there's some interesting places there that definitely have energy surrounding them. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you'll hear in story time how Heritage Park deals with this, which is kind of hilarious. Mm. Um, and uh yeah so the one places the things we do have to talk about um we've got prince house Mm -hmm. um peter anthony prince was a lumber and hydroelectric electricity magnet who as the story goes obtained an exclusive contract to provide calgary with electricity because he fell on his face um on the sidewalk downtown and he went and said to them hey uh why don't you put up electric lights other big cities have this and the city went nah nobody wants that it's a fad and so he was a smart businessman. He negotiated, you know, okay, well, then I'll be the sole proprietor of electricity. And the city went, yeah, okay. Uh, so he set up a dam and um, boom. Probably deliberately fell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he might have fallen deliberately. <laughs> well, he, he did what he did and he made a lot of money at it. So in 1894... Prince built this house for his family on the west end of town. It's believed that he based the design of the house on the plan of a cottage in Glenbrook, Connecticut, uh, published in the 1893 edition of Scientific American. Hmm. He was an entrepreneur. I wonder what the French word is for entrepreneur. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What was that we were watching? We saw that on. I can't remember. That was so funny. funny. (laughs) The Prince house was presented and relocated to Heritage Park in 1967 Thanks to donations by Alberta Natural Gas Company, Alberta and Southern Gas Company, and various private citizens. And this was one of the ones that had been pretty run down. And when they moved it, it's it's one of the few all-brick structures in there. So they actually had to take it apart brick by brick and then rebuild it at the park. That's pretty amazing. So it's got some good ghost stories. So we're definitely going to hear that. Mm -hmm. Um, The other one that we also get to hear about is... The Airdrie House. Yeah. Absolutely. So it was donated to the park in 64. It was built in Airdrie in 06 by Samuel Bushfield. Um, It's a comfortable, modest, plain home. uh, Definitely indicative of the times. And it's found its way on many Western Canadian streets prior to 915. It 
the, sorry, the design, I should say, is is indicative of that time and era. Um, Two-story frames houses were prevalent in the towns, villages, and farms of Western Canada before the First World War. Um, they were simple. Middle-class Canadians could afford them, and they're still standing in towns throughout the region. That's true. I definitely see yeah. some around there. When like, we went through Didsbury and Olds, you remember Cards we went for Dale. lunch? Cards, yeah. Um, what is it? Cards? No, Car- Cross, Carstairs. Crossfield and Carstairs. Carstairs, yeah. yes. Um, there's quite a few of those houses still around, so that was really cool to see. Mm-hmm. Airdrie House, that was the one where something unpleasant had happened inside, and I couldn't go in. I don't know what happened, but they were like calling park staff to come, so... I don't know, maybe someone puked. I have no idea. <laughs> but we've Ooh. got the ghost stories on that I one. And they're okay. Unfortunately, they are not good ghost stories in this one. It's apparently quite scary and loud. The poor thing has been moved so much, probably. It I probably has. It hasn't settled. No, not at all. Um, mm. The next place uh, was the Thorpe House. Mm-hmm. Um, Burnt and Mathia Thorpe um, moved over to Canada. Uh, they died in 1931 here uh, in Calgary. Did they die together? No, she died in 1940 and he died in 1931. Oh, okay. So nine, nine years. So yeah. least, it would have been more romantic if they died together. <laughs> but I would probably think, oh, that's an accident of sorts. They, they traveled by train to Western Canada, arriving in Calgary in 1886. Remember, we were talking about the train. Um, he was part of a group which was organized by... Um, a wealthy, a wealthy eastern lumberman who had explored the mountains west of Calgary through years before. He obtained the timber rights, uh-oh, to large tracts of land on Devil's Head Mountain. Hmm. He uh, transported a complete lumber mill and the necessary personnel by train to Calgary, which was a village of 1,200 people at the time. Uh, hmm. Thorpe came as part of that group, and Mathia and their three children followed the year following. I would think her name is Mathia. Matea, 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 Matea. Well, I, his you name say looks tomato, like tomato. I say tomato. Burnt, but it's burnt. <laughs> it looks like yeah. He's burnt. He's burnt. Well, maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. <laughs> 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 he could be. Well, who knows? Let's look him up. He chose to become a total Canadian and refused to isolate himself as a foreigner, speaking only in his native tongue. He answered his Norwegian-speaking friends in English and thus encouraged them to also become fluent. In the language of their new country. Wait, did he come all the way from Norway on a train? No. That would be interesting. No, he did not. They <laughs> sailed into New York, you smartass. Um, the following children, Frank, Han- Frank, Harry, Myrtle, Lillian, and Roy, were born in Calgary at the Thorpe House, which is not a big house, I might add, uh, which was at the time at 508 2nd Avenue Southwest. The oh, home, we need to find this place. The home was built in... Well, you know where it is now. Heritage Park. <laughs> yeah, it's true. The home was built in 1986 and was donated to Heritage Park by Linian in the 1970s. The home was never outside the family. And when the house was moved to Heritage Park, just east of the Wainwright Hotel, it was found to be insulated throughout with brick cement, which made for a sturdy, cozy home. In 1889, electricity was supplied to the town by the plant at the mill, but plumbing and sewage were not available until 1904. The home was heated by a coal furnace and the cooking down in a coal range for many years until gas became available. Burnt, burnt his coal. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it worked. What they and said... Mattia, 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 Mattia. <laughs> oh we, my she, gosh. She at least stayed warm in her chair. Right? I'm so sorry we butchered these poor people's <laughs> names. Um, what is nice is that this home was always a family home. It was never used by anybody else but the Thorpe family. And apparently they were really happy there. So the home has a really nice feel to it. Um, and is quite kind of, you know, personal, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. The last place uh, story that we talked about was the Canmore Opera House. And why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Because it's actually super famous for its time. Oh, it was built in 1898. Uh, Logs were cut on the slopes of the Howling Peak. Peak. Ugh. Howling Howling Peak. Um, Was the first known as the Band Hall as a place for members of the H.W. McNeil Brass Band to oh, practice. Oh, see, so you could have been in that. Uh, well, I guess I could have played in that. <laughs> I mean, a little bit before your time, but yeah. Um, before Shilky Trumpets and, well, I think, well, maybe, yeah, definitely Nate Yamaha. Anyways, <laughs> I digress. Um, 
Two years after the band hall was completed, the structure served as a morgue. So that's probably why mine it's explosion. a little bit. Yeah, the number one mine exploded mm-hmm. in 1901. That's right. Only a massive underground explosion. Yeah. The number one mine. And it killed eight miners. So that's that's a few, you know. I, I would have I thought millions. No, I'm just kidding. But eight out of 1,200 people would have been a few. That would have been a lot of dads. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I think of all the children that could be on this planet because of the, no, it doesn't matter. So, anyways, um, electricity came to the mine side south of the Bow River and the area home to the mine workings. In 1915, a movie projector was installed in the band hall. So, because of course, if you had a building like that in your town, in mm-hmm. a small town, it wasn't just used for one thing. No, of course not. Right? No, so, yeah, it's, it's like a community hall for sure. And of course, uh, in 1922, the band hall was name was changed to the Canmore Opera House, and after an addition was added to making it the only opera log house in the world. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's a cool fact. Um, the house was see the beginning above the end during the Great Depression when its doors closed in 32, which is pretty sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would not reopen until the 1940s, um, but only for movies. On Wednesday evenings and on Saturdays. And that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So midweek and first day of the weekend sort of thing. Maybe second, depending on when your weekend starts. Um, the house closed for the last time in 1960. Uh, and by 1963, it seemed the only log house, opera house in the world would be demolished. Uh-oh. So it was brought over to the... Bought by... Um, sorry heritage park bought this building and extensively renovated it in 64 and moved it to calgary Mm -hmm. so it's living a new life which is pretty cool it's kind of sad i mean it served as all sorts of all sorts of well morgue and yeah, and they actually Bad. had some it's, celebrities at the time travel out there to see it. I'm having difficulty trying to phrase this one. Yeah. It was a be all house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> house of the damned. House <laughs> house house of an entertainment and theater. I don't know. It's that's probably why its energy is certainly weird when we went by it. I thought that's kind of bizarre. It is a different feeling kind of place. Um, but it is pretty cool. And um yeah, I think it's a I think it's a pretty special place so mm-hmm. i've been in there for different things and it's got a weird feel to it but it's not bad it's not a bad feel i think it's more performers who just want to hang out and do their thing yeah all mm-hmm. right so with no further ado we are going to jump into our stories well, i certainly hope our audience likes these i ones. hope so too and uh, we will be back right after this So here we are at Heritage Park. Um, interesting when you talk to the staff here, how they have, well, we have the official story and then we have the actual ghost story. And uh, very much noted they try and play both sides of the coin where we don't have any ghosts here, everything's ghost free. And then Halloween rolls around and they put on a ghost tour. So, you know, it kind of works that way, I guess. We're, we're talking about four different places. Um, we are gonna be talking about um, the Prince House the Thorpe House, the Airdrie House, and the Canmore Opera House. And um, it's actually pretty interesting. They've got some interesting histories all their own, which we will have talked about in the history time. This is just for the ghosts. So that's what we're going to be talking about here. I'm actually standing just outside the Thorpe House uh, and Airdrie House. They're next door to each other here. Um, We already went through the Prince House, and we went through the Canmore Opera House, and now we're here and and doing that. the things with the Prince House, uh, and as you know from the history, it has a pretty, the owner had a pretty tragic backstory. Um, the Prince House is known to be haunted by strange things happening in the house. One of the security guards, and actually not just him, they've actually had a few people notice that, notice that all the lights on the third floor went on. And people have seen a light up on the third floor, even after the park is closed and the house is locked up. 
That would be totally normal, except there's no electricity there. They didn't restore the third floor to have electricity on all of those kinds of things. Uh, it was extremely bright up there while the rest of the other floors were dark. Another security guard also noticed the balcony window on the third level kept on swinging open and closed. Uh, he brought in a guard dog, but it froze up with its hair standing up, ears pointing down, tail between his legs, the whole deal. And then the dog went out the door and he went back to being normal again. Um, some staff have also heard loud stomping on the second level with several objects being misplaced, moved around, boots, fans, other personal items. Some people have seen a woman dressed in a flowing white dress at the home's nursery playing with a baby, but they both disappear when they look back again. The other thing with the lady in the white dress, she seems to really have affinity for babies and for children. And when people come into the house, people have seen the lady in white looking down on the kids um, with their moms. But of course she disappears once they disappear. So she definitely has an affinity for that. It's not really a big scary place. It's actually not bad at all, but definitely some very odd things going on there. The next place um, would be the Airdrie House. And the Airdrie House, of course, you know the history now, but they do know the only official thing they'll say is something very disturbing happened here, uh, but they're not exactly sure what it was. Um, when one lady was in there, she said she felt a profound negative energy, felt very depressed, um, something very disturbing happened, and a feeling of pushing her head down like she was being pushed into a humbling bow. Um, while I didn't hear the words in my head, the words were, you don't speak about us in that way. And when I stepped back outside, the feeling of depression left me. Um, Airdrie House was originally, of course, built in Airdrie. Uh, the man who owned it was apparently quite uh, a bit of a tyrant, and uh, he still seems to be kicking around Airdrie House even now. So it's pretty interesting. Other guests have experienced feeling kind of really weird negative feelings as well, um, and not really a place where they want to be. So that's, that's that going on too. Um, as far as the Camor Opera House goes, um, it has a lot of things going on in it, like probably the most haunted building in terms of variety in Heritage Park. You've already heard the history of the Opera House, which is actually quite fascinating. People have seen apparitions of deceased miners and performers dressed in old-fashioned clothing. Um, people often hear the haunting sounds of a voice of a woman singing and also a piano playing um, somewhere near the main stage at times when no one was near the piano or indeed upstairs. Um, one lady who was in catering said she hated doing private events there because she would always hear noises upstairs and uh, people just sort of hanging around and walking around and thumping around and she knew she was the only one in the building. One group of visitors described hearing the loud, boisterous sounds of a party coming from inside the auditorium. But when someone supposedly checked inside, the dark, cavernous seating area was empty and eerily silent. Witnesses have also reported seeing the apparition of an older gentleman dressed in old-fashioned attire, sitting inside the building or wandering around the grounds. And it's rumored that otherworldly entity may have once been a member of the band, and he just enjoys watching the performers rehearse from time to time. And then finally, we have Thorpe House. And Thorpe House was, uh, uh, it was Norwegian-based, built by Norwegian settlers. Um, Thorpe House has a number of different things going on. But one particular story is uh, these family came into Thorpe House, a mom and a daughter and a, and a grandmother. And they all went straight upstairs, as they often do, because the stairs are right there in Thorpe House. And when they went upstairs... All of a sudden, the lady down in the kitchen, who was the interpreter, was waiting for them to come back down. And she heard running, screaming, and then the mother saying, wait, wait, come back. And then the grandmother followed, kind of confused looking. And when they got the little girl calmed down and the mom calmed down, because she was freaked out too, it had turned out that indeed uh, the poor little girl had gone upstairs and seen in the bedroom the shoes uh, moving on their own, almost like they were doing a little dance, like someone was holding them by the edges and making them dance. So that was a bit of a shock, uh, and the poor little girl freaked out. The mom ran over to see what was wrong. She saw it too, and they both ran screaming out of the building, and Grandma didn't see it, but she was mostly upset that she didn't see it. So uh, I guess that one didn't work out so hot for her. There's a lot going on here, and I am sure there are other stories here um, with other ghosts that just haven't been identified yet. Um, I know that there's one building down 
uh, for many, many years, it was a Calgary shop. It's down by the country school. And uh, I remember even going in that one as a kid and feeling very negative energy. So I don't know what it was used for, but it certainly wasn't used for anything good, or at least it had some pretty bad things happen. So that's it for Heritage Park. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the stories. And now we'll jump back into the studio with Jason and I. Well, we hope you enjoyed the stories from Heritage Park. Yeah, I hope so too. You got to hear the whistle from the train. Feel yeah. Like feel like you're there. I certainly hope you enjoyed that. That was fun. Yeah. And uh, hopefully next time um, when I go again, which honestly probably won't be here for a couple of years because you really don't need to go more than once every two years. <laughs> um, Jason will get to come too and then we'll just eat raisin bread. And- yeah, if I'm not doing a workation. <laughs> That's all right. We have got to work that around that. <laughs> yeah, we need to stop going away at the beginning of the month. Exactly. I can't do um, that anymore. Nope. Um... But in the meantime, uh, we have, I think we talked a little bit about this last episode, um, about sort of giving the show a little bit of a tweak, uh, because I realized that actual ghost story with the actual history from the actual place or in the actual place was kind of painting us into a corner. Yeah. Mostly because of COVID we had some difficulty traveling and some things were difficult with regard to our own government and trying to get to the border and trying to get back and thankfully that silly app is going south yes. forever when end of this month really gosh I oh want that's to amazing see that app arrive here i'm so sick and tired yeah, of it me too it's annoying and it prevents so much traveling it's more of a nuisance but thankfully you know we've never had an issue going back and forth nope but um, I'm looking forward to actually going south and doing more meaningful travel rather than being on 72 or 48 hour timelines or yes. this nonsense yes. or that nonsense. Honestly, it's 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 counterproductive, and we're looking yeah. forward to having you guys come up north of the border. Yeah, it's important. Like now, people you know, can come this way. And thankfully, I don't think we even require any more vaccines. I think I don't even think they care anymore. Uh, Thank gosh. Right. And speaking of traveling, mm-hmm. uh, we want to give a big shout out to Sarah. Yes. Hi, Sarah. Thank who you. Who is in Australia. Um, Sarah was going to come at the end of this month for a visit all the way from Australia. Mm-hmm. And she was making a point of stopping into Victoria to say hi to us. And we had a plan. Sarah was going to come over. She's going to go on a ghost walk. And I got a, a message from Sarah a couple weeks ago. Guess what happened to her? Oh, no. What? Yeah. It's, it's not good. Um she was out hiking with a friend mm. and her friend's dog got freaked out by something and ran away. But unfortunately, Sarah was in the path of his flight path and he crashed into Sarah and he broke her leg in three places. Oh, no. Yeah. I hope, I hope you recover quick. Yeah. It's going to be really tough. About three months to recover. Mm. Um, surgeries, therapy, everything. So needless to say, Sarah couldn't come here to Victoria so we just want to say, hi, Sarah. Mm-hmm. We're, Hello. We're with you in spirit. That's right, we are. And hopefully you get to come soon, because she said there's a chance you make it to come later on. I look forward to that. Yeah. And look, we look forward to meeting you guys. We're, we're, we want our, um, we'll be having our modern seance fairly soon. Absolutely, for yeah. For our Patreon, so yeah. that'll be nice. Yeah. Um, I know I've been stepping back from my other works and duties and stuff to uh, help contribute to this a bit more. Um, I've been a little bit sick the last couple of weeks, but that's okay. You know, getting better, I think. And it's I'm all sick good. right now, so we're both. That's all right. We're just struggling sick. on. We're sick together. <laughs> um, sick of each other. No, <laughs> <laughs> but on the plus side, even though we're going through growing pains, cool things are happening. We did yeah. go and meet with the TV station about the TV show. Oh yes, that was fun. So that will be happening with Chris and Alex. We're yeah. excited for that. I think they're more excited than we are, actually. Oh no, I'm, well, I'm actually really stuff. excited. I I know we're we're busy, but uh, when th- when things are important, we get it done. Absolutely. You know, my attitude's not 
you know, we have to do that. My attitude is we get to do that. There's a much more positive spin on getting to do something. It's an optimistic thing. Absolutely. And that's that's what we were talking about, how um, all the different things we've done um, have really helped get us to where we are now and how we get to do these cool things and meet cool people and, you know, just make connections all over the world, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, really. we have a new little adventure car for Ghosts and Bears. So that's a little exciting. <laughs> of course we have another car for Ghosts and Bears. I should say, like, um, I don't want everyone to think we just, like, run around and buy cars. Like, Jason's mm. very, very good at buying cars and selling cars. And he makes a bit of money, usually off each one. <laughs> and he puts all that money in one place. And then when he sees something he really, really wants, then we have the money to get it. So that's yeah, kind of how it I that did happen. get Ian one heck of a guitar, actually. You did. It's beautiful. It's uh, this particular guitar has been played a handful of times by Jimi Hendrix himself. Right. So obviously I'm that good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's I see it as a bit of an investment. Um, I did get a substantial amount off when I made an offer on it. And it's more the instrument it's symbolic of creation and that's actually really important because i think i had lost that for a very very long time Mm -hmm. and i've really been rediscovering that in the last six months or so and i think that's part of the upheaval of of wanting to do different things and wanting to do things better and having time to do them and now i'm just starting to feel overwhelmed because there's so many cool things that i want to try but saying that i did write produce and record a theme song. <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty for cool. I'm our, really excited Our patron-only show, Ghost Stories We Have Heard. And um, I'm getting help from uh, Lou down in Florida. She's adding, and her Stories husband, they're adding a bass track to it. No, 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 don't work it. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I just melded two songs together. Oh, I'm oh, sure. oh, oh, oh. Um, so she's adding to that. So that's actually kind of cool. I'm actually really excited about how that's going to come out. So Yeah, that that's pretty exciting. And, you know, I got us some more items for helping with content creation. So that'll help us when we're on the road too. save time. You know, it's more out there, more active. I'm certainly looking forward to getting on the road once this app is gone forever. I never (laughs) want to do it again. Hear that? Hear that? Prime Minister, everyone else. I'm sick of that app. But but seeing (laughs) all that. It's such a pain. We um, (laughs) realized we can't, because we do both work full time. Yeah. uh, We can't be everywhere we want to be. So we're starting to have people come uh, online and kind of report to us from that place so the stories are still coming from that place with a real life person um it just isn't going to be us because we can't be there yeah so we have one coming up soon well sure of course we'll try to be but you know i I know we're going to run out of stories (laughs) and also i would really like to have stories from other places not just victoria or vancouver yeah send us some stuff so we've done one interview and i may have to redo it because um the sound was so bad on my end but um that was awesome. So yeah, thank you, Brooks, for that. We're yes. looking forward to having that one on soon. Uh, and that involves the Stanley Hotel and Brooks's own experiences there. So. Did I say I'm sick of that Arrive Can app? No. I, how do you feel about I it? I hate that Arrive Can app. <laughs> I just want it to go away. I have it on my American phone and my Canadian phone because I can't tell if I'm going to. It's such a pain. It, but is, it is terrible. Thanks to us being prudent and ensuring that app is filled out right, we've never had an issue at not the border. Once. No, not Thank once. gosh. But it's yeah. still annoying. It is. Just go away, arrive, Ken. Anyway, <laughs> so um, yeah, keep us in mind if you've got um, a house you lived in, or you know there's some place around you that's super haunted, and and you you feel like you have a story there with that. Either you've had experiences there, or you've heard stories, you know some of the history. That's what we want to do. So reach out to us, um, ghosts and bears, ghosts at, and ghosts bears. and bears at gmail.com. Send and us an as email in November. Thank you for that, Jason. Um, send us an email and let's try and put that together so we can have you on the show. And we will be still the only podcast that gives you the actual ghost story. With the actual history in from the, the actual place. From the actual place. Um, it could but be it, in the actual place. So you never know. It could you, be from or in. You, we, we'll figure knows? that out as we go. Who knows? It'll be a blend of both, I think. And we had a good week, I think, overall. Yeah. Work, work's going good. Yeah. We got our little electric car. We were actually, we were um, a bit off the path. We were actually. <laughs> Not you. 
We're actually <laughs> looking at purchasing a hydrogen fuel cell car, which is literally the wave of the future. But unfortunately, it's only the wave of the future in California right now. Yeah, there's we have a lack of infrastructure in British Columbia here. We have one hydrogen fuel cell station in Victoria well, on, for the whole on the island. entire island of so, 750,000 people. And I literally poured over articles, depreciation so did curves. I. Oh my gosh. I, I, I feel like I know everything about we fuel were, cell. We were sending videos to each other. We were sending articles to each other. It sounds actually like there is a company in California that is making what looks like hard drives. Solid state hydrogen. Yeah. yeah. And it laser creates the hydrogen so as opposed to having a an infrastructure that's based off of compression well extraction compression and transportation and you know the typical the typical hoopla of a filling cool. station it actually is more like a cartridge that they're trying to envision like a propane tank because you don't care that your propane tanks used or old you just swap out the cartridge yeah and it's amazing, this technology. So that's one reason why we didn't pull the trigger on that fuel cell car, because that was one of the best cars Oh, I've the ever car driven. was gorgeous. And it has so, crazy high subsidies and, and money back from the government. Toyota Mirai. There's no, there's no calling that. It was strictly the fact that there was a very real chance we would end up with a very expensive, lovely looking uh, driveway <laughs> ornament. And... <laughs> I, like I the poor man it. in Kelowna we read about. Yeah. And I don't want that. So no, it, we decided to go with a different option. We felt like it was the most selfless car you could ever drive. Because as we drove it from here to Island View, which is about, I don't know, 20 kilometers down the way or 12 miles or whatever that is, it cleaned. I kid you not. It cleaned 71,000 liters of air. Pretty cool. Not only is its exhaust water. Yeah. It actually cleans the air because the, there's a purifier prior to the fuel cell that actually cleans the air. So on the dash, it has these people running along, running. Very healthy joggers. And for every person that comes up on the screen is enough air for one person to breathe for one day. <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, that's insanity. It is 100% crazy. Yeah, but it no. was it was quieter than any other electric car that I've driven or owned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's based off of the Lexus LS. So yeah. Toyota really did throw the book at it. Anyway, we're not a and, car podcast. Yeah, no, I, I just <laughs> talking passions. But, you know, that might have been our ghost car. It might have been. But instead, we have a Mazda electrical car, and I'm very excited about yeah, it. Yeah, little so. MX-30. So that'll be a lot little of fun. MX. <laughs> That's Jason's theme song whenever we drive it. Um, so, yeah, so we've got some good things coming. Yeah, we're um, excited. And we're actually doing something kind of fun this weekend that we can't talk about yet. Yeah, that's uh, right. But we will. It's oh, yes. Done. We're, not, we're, we're bound by silence. We are bound by silence, at least until. I bind you to silence. <laughs> Good luck. That's typically how it goes. They just bind. <laughs> what is that? I bind you, Nancy, from doing harm. Oh, right. The craft. The craft. Such a great movie. We should do. We, we watched The Craft Legacy. It wasn't as we, good. No, but you know what we should do? We should do a um, podcast where we talk about The Craft, mm -hmm. and then we talk about The Craft Legacy, and we talk about what we thought was good in one and bad in the other. Oh, yeah. We can do re movie like, reviews. Like a fun movie review one. Oh, I do like the Paranormal series. Actually, they scared the heck out of me. They really did. Do you remember going to bed that well. night? We walked from the TV room all the way upstairs to our room and we're practically huddled like that was scared bizarre. little girls. That is a scary movie. <laughs> anyway. Not like scary movie. That's not, not really scary. No, that's not scary. That's just stupid <laughs> model offense. I yeah. love it. Of course. It's so funny. Um, but no, we want to talk about that. And again, if you want to hear my uh, debut single... Uh, the ghost stories oh, yeah. we have heard theme song. You're just gonna have to sign up and become a patron for the patron show, which is ghost stories we have heard that we drop every other week. Um, but until then, we want to thank our current uh patrons because we love you and we're grateful for you. And uh, thank you for sticking with us. And those people are Elise, Sharon, Dawn, Adam, Bryce, Sherry, Brooks, Mer Mary, Mer Ugh. I can't even pronounce it. Marion, Marion, duh! I, <laughs> my brain is fraught. <laughs> you are so tired. I know. Kathleen, Alexa, Debbie, Jackie, Julie, Ruth, Mary Frances, Cassie, Gina, and Victoria, Sandy, Christopher, David, Ashley, Jeremiah, Elizabeth, Phoebe, Nix, Melinda, Jordan, Tammy, James. 
Taya, Evan, Arwen, Steve, Kyle, and Charlotte, Catherine, and Mari. Mari. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Oh, my gosh. And I'm I'm just, <laughs> it's just popping into my head right now. Arwen is getting ready, along with I Know Lou, oh, yes. in Florida. They're getting ready for Hurricane Ian. <sighs> oh, probably when this drops almost. I know. Wednesday night it's is very, when it hits. So very hope, inappropriate. So we're not dropping this. We hope this. you're okay. Yeah, we certainly hope that you will be fine. Yeah. You know the irony of this? I spent my entire childhood as an Ian mm. in Canada with nothing having my name on it. We've talked about this, Jay and I have. Mm-hmm. But I could never get one of the nameplates or a pen or a cup. Nothing ever no, had my but name. But a storm was. Named but finally, after you. a hurricane that possibly could cause massive harm. They what called is, after that. Thanks. What? What? No, was not it a tropical storm? Oh, they're they're predicting it might go up to three. Oh gosh, yeah, I or certain. three. So, but our hope goes out, out to you. Yeah, hope you guys are okay and um, you're nice and safe. And BB Nix, uh, Brianna, she sent us that super cool ghost sticker. Yeah, that's um, pretty exciting. That was awesome. So we put that up on our Instagram. So keep in mind, if you want to follow us on Instagram, we're there, Ghosts and, and Bears. bears. Um, also on a Facebook page and, of course, our Gmail account as well. Um, some people say to me, Ian, why would I become a patron? Oh, it's because you get some stuff, I you think. You get some cool what? stuff. So for five bucks a month... You're going to be a bear admirer. Yeah. Um, and you're going to get uh, your general support, which, quite frankly, we give everyone because we're just that way. Behind the scenes pictures for every episode, mm-hmm. early access to episodes whenever possible, private community. You're now a member of our Discord server. Bonus episode of the ongoing series, Ghost Stories We Have Heard. Yeah, that one's cool because we do that kind of on the road. We yeah. do, and it's, it's actually like, a lot of fun. It's we. It was like the uh, Cars and Comedians, so we took the spin on that. Maybe Ghost Stories. We didn't even so do that on purpose. It just no, it just happened. <laughs> it, well, we had to go somewhere, so we decided to record it, and we decided to make that a thing. Yeah. It's kind of fun. It is fun. And you'll hear me honk once in a while. Jason has his honks of joy. If oh, you want to know what that's all about... You can just listen to the show. <laughs> we also do the patron shout out, as you heard, and you're going to get a sticker after three months of sponsorship. A sticker. Ooh. Now, pet the bears. For this, you get. Oh, Jen, you get support for, and early access to uh, the episodes whenever possible. Behind the scenes photos. So I do quite a bit of photos. Um, I've actually been working my Instagram a bit more. It seems to be. A little bit more popular. Chase Kelly, 1978 on oh, Instagram. Yeah, so Chase, check it out. J-A-C-E, Kelly. 1978. Is it 1978 or 78? Oh. It's something. It's something. It's, let me check. If you if you, if you you search for Jason Kelly, you know you got the right one when you see um, a guy. Yeah, 1978. So Jace, like Ace. I thought it was. Yeah, you, you yeah. got that right. I yeah. don't know. What. I'm not very good at such things, but I'm trying. You know I'm you're giving doing, it a go you're doing very well uh yeah, exclusive voting power what do you want to see more power of more powers it's <laughs> fascinating uh fan requests and ghost story priority that's fascinating um in that you're part of our discord server a shout out which we do uh and then the bonus episodes naturally but you'll get exclusive sticker and a mug can't go wrong with i ghost love story. the mug we do have the mug yeah. It's very cute. You can't go wrong with the uh, Everyone ghost loves a good one. mug. Everyone does. Um, ghost Bear Acolyte of the Sacred Cave. <laughs> That's the, such a great That name. one is going to mouthful though. get you everything else. Merch, of course, the private community. This one's also going to get you the monthly modern seance with us. So, yes, the seance um, is fun. We're we're trying to be mm. better about doing that because the month seems to go by so quick and then we don't do it. So we are going to be doing that soon. We're going to start looking that on a regular Sunday. Yeah, I think we're going to... We're, we're going to book like best. six of them ahead of time. And then you can show over up. Over six months and then Please you'd be able to come and know where they are. Come we'd love, up. We'd love we'd to have you there. We'd love to have you there. Bonus episodes. And then you're not only going to get the mug and the sticker, but what else are you going to get? You're going to get a t-shirt. Yeah, really? you're getting a t-shirt. Bitch. Everyone loves... M- what? <laughs> Yeah, you're getting a you're getting a t-shirt. So wow. You can't go wrong with that. And then finally, we have Bear Appreciation Society. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. I like the uh, I like the look of that one. Well, you get everything. We're plus, super grateful for you. <laughs> you're going to get a one-on-one phone call with uh, Jay and I. You're going to get that monthly modern seance. You get your patron shout out. You're going to get all the merch um, yeah. and uh, all sorts of cool things. But the phone call with Ian's pretty sweet. Well, yeah. you know, I hope. I don't Maybe know. Maybe me. People, I, people never I'm seem around. to want to do it. 
I'm just like a lowly whoever. But people never want to do it. So I think that maybe says more about me than it does I about don't them. No. And then we have Grand Bear Worship. And that one is like off the hook. It's only got 10 positions available. And you're going to get a whole lot on here. You're also going to get everything we talked about before, as well as a signed copy of my first book, Victoria's that is actually Most pretty Haunted. Cool. The, the book is excellent. Yes. And it's every it's available at every good bookshop <laughs> um although ironically i can't get it right now no it's not weird well it's gone into its fourth printing which is very cool um uh, but it means i have to wait until the middle of october to get my it's books. not ironic it is pretty funny it also tells me i need to be smarter about ordering my books well that's what i told you <gasps> how dare you? i did it's how about planning dare you oh you're about planning you're mr look ahead and plan i try when i can <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh harder than anything else. Oh, that's true. You know, I don't, but my traveling is somewhat to a plan. Uh huh. But it's mostly here. It's there, mostly, never. it's mostly get in the car and see where we end up. That's, that's how Jason yeah, travels. Well, one time on his birthday this year, we left Victoria and we suddenly we were in California that night. That was a very long day. It was fabulous. But it was fun. I'm not going to lie. That was a lot of fun. And then it was a good we we ended up in crescent city mm -hmm. which is beautiful mm -hmm. and and then we had breakfast in florence mm -hmm. and there's that beautiful lighthouse there that one's definitely haunted oh, i the love Hesita that lighthouse yeah the hasita lighthouse yeah, that and, one's very cool and of course we ended up at mcminnville and that the year beautiful was it the evergreen yeah mu museum yeah. I, I mean that is probably one of the most shocking airplanes of all history i think that. it's about time to go back there actually mm -hmm. and it's close enough we could do that on a weekend yes and so then we we'll went to, to oh what is that called in washington mon not monsanto it's not it, <laughs> it's it's what is it what? where where um kurt cobain's oh is. that place his his childhood home not his Dying in home. No, um, Montezano. Yeah, Montezano. Not a which is an interesting place. In. Actually, a uh, big shout out to the late Kurt Cobain and Nirvana. Never mind. In fact, that album was just released a few days ago. Um, what twenty the twenty third or twenty fourth? What nineteen ninety two? You're old. I remember that <laughs> album. I actually still have the um, the original LP sealed. Yeah, well, that's because you're old. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> I, I it's sad actually. Um, there was a very good article that popped up in my news news about that, and and Facebook blocked the album cover. Oh, because the naked on. baby on it. Yeah, they called yeah. it child pornography. That's, okay, that's ridiculous. Well, it, it is what it is. I mean, people are gonna get all weird. So, well, I think that was the shock value of the photo. Yeah, of course. Of course. It was it was Kurt Cobain and and that band put that album out there for that reason it's fascinating anyways i'm going off topic a bit no not you but well the whole point is we do get out there and we travel and i, I you know what being there at his place there's there's actually a good reason why i brought it up um my brother late brother committed suicide 30 years ago holy smokes almost mm -hmm. to the day mm -hmm. august 29th mm -hmm. so it's ironic nirvana nevermind comes out because all of a sudden it was like my favorite album and blood sugar sex magic yeah. from red hot chili peppers but those those albums and my music so this is why i got ian that fabulous guitar is you can't buy happiness no no you can't and and music is it feeds the soul so yeah. i'm really excited that yeah. um he's he's playing it yeah. and, and he has all these cool things to be able to record that that piece and and i'm, I'm having sure a guys, lot of fun with music again. i'm sure you guys you guys will really like his new intro so <laughs> I, I i do my only reservation is i'm not duetting with him i should be duetting with him but you know i it's not like i can't sing oh well there you go i'd like to hear you do the three-part harmony on your own I don't do that. <laughs> but I have no problems harmonizing. All yeah, right, friends. We, All right. I, I, on that musical note, we're going to end for today. Yeah. So thanks for being with us. Thanks for um, following along on our wild tangents between travel apps, hydrogen cars, movies, Kurt Cobain. And here we are back at the end in Heritage Park. <laughs> Heritage Park. Yeah, it comes so, full circle. So thank you for that. <laughs> it's like my Instagram. 
It just goes everywhere all at once. Wow. You know, <laughs> actually, Jason's Instagram is a really good um, insight into how Jason's mind works. I think. Would you think that's fair? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's interesting. It's like being trapped in a box with a ping pong ball. <laughs> it's kind of here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> but there's some fabulous photos. There are. So. I, I mean, that's that's my only reservation is they they really chop the photo. I have to really think about the positioning of the photo before i upload oh because it's, it's be not the yeah, it's not it's not yeah, a faithful representation yeah, yeah, yeah. of the actual photograph but instagram I will pick, death of photography i will bring out the best part of that photo good mm-hmm. all right my anyways friend. have fun thank you for being with us thanks for uh listening as always you have feedback please send it to us we'd really like to hear it you want to help us out give us a five-star review on itunes always a big help mm-hmm. and um we're just grateful for you guys being there so f- thanks for listening and uh remember when you're thinking about podcasts we're the only podcast that gives you the actual ghost story with the actual history from the actual place and hopefully soon that place will be with you take care good night or day or morning or weekend afternoon you know whatever work uh, shift enjoy walk home, enjoy your day driving evening night dusk dawn who knows drunk in a hot tub trying to escape from your children okay we'll take care bye bye